Let us now go to Washington, D.C., where the Reverend Barry W. Lynn is standing by. For nearly a quarter of a century, he ran Americans United for separation of church and state. And besides being a lawyer, a member of the Supreme Court Bar, he is also an ordained minister in the United Church of Christ. And are you, is this your home in Malibu? Uh, this is my imaginary home in Malibu. Yes. And we don't have your wife again tonight. No. Well, we have to get you're ready. Her, you're, you're like a heroin dealer. <laughs> the first, you know, the first yeah. taste is free. Exactly. Then, yeah, I get yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, I want to say happy birthday to somebody, to Buddy Guy. Do you know who Buddy Guy is? A great blues artist. Right. Yeah. So he was kind enough to do a fundraiser for us at, uh, I believe, at the home of uh, Morris Dees at the Southern Poverty Law Center. And um, but it's, he's 85 today. He's 85. And one of the funniest stories he ever told me, you know, blues people in the 30s and 40s frequently performed in bars anytime there were patrons. And in places like Chicago, there were lots of people who were getting out of um, the night shift and, the, you know, it'd be 730 in the morning and they'd go and drink. And so buddy guy was playing in one of these bars one early one morning. A guy came in, said to the bartender, give me two shots. And a bartender says to him, um, is somebody else joining you? And this guy had a big paper sack. And he said, no, he's already here. He opened the sack and there was a head in there. He had cut the guy's head off because he had been having an affair with his wife. Wow. Those, those were people who acted when they got ticked off. Right. Uh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Let's think about that. Wow. Uh, isn't that long day's journey in tonight where he... Is it what's the Eugene O'Neill play where he just oh. killed somebody? Anyway, that's I don't not, know. It's good to see you, and see you. Uh, we have time, which is always good. You've good. been watching Fox News, so I have some clips nice. for you. Yes, I have some clips. Let me see them. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is Tammy Bruce talking to Pete Hegseth about COVID. Uh, you'll tell us, as, what do they say, on the other end of this, you'll tell us who Tammy Bruce was. I think she right. used to be head of the National Organization of Women, correct? At least in California, she was. Yeah. Right. And yeah. and she, like she's like Susan Estrich, right? There's like two oh, no. caucuses. No, no, Keep no. Back. I mean, uh, Susan Estrich, much as she fell from grace but not as far as tammy bruce well why don't you play the clip this is tammy and then we'll bruce. prove it okay so let me from grace. okay here we go tammy bruce on uh fox uh two nights ago you, know, you this new guidance affects all of us of course you have uh, a bunch of kids uh, americans care about their closest loved ones uh, and yet here we've got an order that is frankly going to compel some people to not get the vaccine because of this kind of distrust that continues. I got the vaccine in certain ways. I think it's like if I could give it back at this point, you know, because <laughs> this, what do you think the impact of all of this is going to have? Well, it's because the last six months have been dizzying, uh, Tammy. We went in the last six months, we've gone from the vaccine is going to end the COVID-19 pandemic to you can still get COVID even if you're vaccinated, then to you can still pass COVID on to others even if you're vaccinated, and then to you can still might even die or be at risk if you're vaccinated. Now we're at the point where they're saying, the unvaccinated are killing the vaccinated. I, the, you can't keep up with the so-called science that they're using as justification to put us back in masks. And my wife and I were sitting on the porch just 30 minutes ago talking about the reality that our kids could be walking back into school next year wearing masks. Now, our yeah. decision is we're not going to tolerate that. Yeah. And a lot of yeah. Americans won't tolerate that. The science isn't there for kids. The teachers are vaccinated. They are protected. But statists can't resist. See, there's two options. But it's 
vaccine passports like Europe's doing, and we'll never yeah. do that. Or it's punish everyone. And that's what we're seeing right now. Everyone mask back up. What's going on? Well, <laughs> the uh, even I find it so surprising to watch Fox News, as I did a couple of nights ago, to see what their coverage would be of the, the first hearing on January 6th. Well, and, I have clips of, uh, of uh, uh, Tucker and Britt Hume. So we'll get to well, that. But, but let, let's just deal with this. Let's just yeah. deal with this. If you, you have to be really, really working at being stupid not to understand, to make the statements that this jerk from Fox and Friends uh, weekend made. Because when science changes, normal people, sensible, rational people say, well, what does the new science tell us? The science has always been there. The science tells us it's unequivocal. Masks did stop a lot of the spread of COVID. They worked. Then everybody's happy about we don't have to wear them. I was happy I didn't have to wear them. I was happy I could go to the movies and sit there with five other people and not feel like I was going to die. But then this was all predicated on the idea that people would have a rational approach to getting vaccinated, that they would do what was done during polio. And they, I mean, this was absolutely, I think I mentioned this last week. I mean, I remember, I mean, I had people that I knew, and there were constant videos of children in iron lungs that allowed them to breathe. And my parents, they wouldn't let me go swimming because they were afraid, everybody was afraid of this. Then the Jonas Salt vaccine comes out, people are just, they love Jonas Salk. They loved him because he had done something that was going to, they hoped, and it did, along with another vaccine. But I mean, it, it terminated polio. Nobody in the United States gets polio anymore. It was so different from now. And one of the biggest differences, of course, is that we didn't have people like the Fox News people telling us lies about science, telling us that they don't understand what the scientific method is, they don't understand it, and just continuing this total lie. Now, Tammy Bruce, she, um, she she was a talk show host for a while, I think maybe after she left the National Organization for Women. But the National Organization for Women, of course, is an extremely important grassroots women's movement. Tammy Bruce doesn't fit into it, but she found that if she could become the former, whatever she was, vice president of now, she could get and change her attitude. She could get on the Fox News channel and be revered as a liberal. It's kind of like the Fox News channel liked me only once, only once. Because I took the position that there was a university out in the Midwest that was going to put in uh, foot baths for Muslim students. They didn't ask for it, but they just said, we're going to put foot baths in. We're going to change the architecture. We're going to put foot baths in. And I, I said, you know, you really can't do that. You can't change the architecture of a public university in order to accommodate a religious need. And I said, almost jokingly, I said, the next thing you know, some Christian group's gonna come and say, uh, we want baptismal fonts on the campus. A year later, what happened? A group of Christians in some college insisted that they wanted the baptismal fonts because you never knew when somebody was going to come to Jesus and want to get baptized. So nothing you think is beyond these people who are convinced, as John was saying, that they have a word from God. They know what God thinks about every single thing, and they're going to implement that no matter what. The you debated, the country. I remember seeing you debating the Muslim footbaths. Uh, you were against it, and Dick Morris was for it as long as he could drink the water when they were done. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm Tim pretty Morris sure that's what bath water. Yeah, you may have been elaborating a little bit on what he said on air, but he, he could have easily believed that. Well, he was another guy. I mean, Dick Morris, Tammy Bruce. Once you can you imagine? I mean, I, I may have been forgotten by now, but what if I just started 
saying, you know, I, I've thought about it. Progressive politics are terrible. terrible. I've decided to become not only a born again Christian, but I've decided to become a conservative. I mean, Pat Robertson would have me on his show. Everybody would have me on his show. And, I, you know, I, I couldn't do so, the speech. That so you're why aren't you doing that? Yeah, what are because, you doing here? Because <laughs> what you know, just have a certain amount of integrity. I believe <laughs> that you should actually it. say what you believe. And but, uh, but it, it, it's a. I mean, it's. Um, it, is that what it is? Do they? This guy Hegseth or whatever his name is. He's a graduate yeah. of Princeton. Yeah. As is Ted Cruz. Yeah. So. What? You know, Josh Hawley is also, you know, like a graduate of Yale Law School, and he yep. spouts a lot of uh, evangelical nonsense, but he believes it. Like, they come out the other end of what we think are these elite schools, and they really do believe this this religious nonsense yeah, I, I, I think most of them do i can't be sure about all of them but i think they do and is Ted uh, cruz a true believer is josh hawley a true believer do they well you know my in terms my of the religion only, well my my clearest personal response uh, interaction with ted cruz is when my wife you know who is not here <laughs> but we we yeah, had everyone. dinner we had dinner with ted cruz and his wife before a debate I was having for some right wing group. And I used to love doing right wing debates because I could charge them a huge amount of money and then I would give them to all my left wing causes. But he was so argumentative. I mean, every single thing about raising children, about what do you think about anything, not even the subject and whatever we were talking about, some constitutional issue. He just was so dogmatic and his wife was just as bad. And she kept going back to him and defending him. He was running for the Senate at the time. But but I was convinced, you know, you can't make that up. It, I, I've had private dinners with a lot of right wing people. And every once in a while, you know, they'll kind of admit that, well, I don't really believe it or I don't feel that strongly about it. He felt strongly about every single right wing nut position that he took on matters of politics or religion. Or just living a common life. Does Mike Pence believe it? I absolutely think Mike Pence believes it. Mike Pence. So does who's more dangerous? The the people who are just pretending they believe it, or the true believers? It depends what their audience is. I mean, you know, Tucker Carlson, and I know you're going to get to Tucker, but yeah, you know, he used to be a, a mildly annoying person. But when I watched him the other night, and maybe you have a clip of this, he, it became clear that he's not just mildly wrong. He's dangerously idiotic. I mean, the stuff he says now is just plain dangerous. When you deny the validity of vaccinations, when you don't understand that the fact that so many people are refusing to be vaccinated does, in fact, put at risk all kinds of people including children. I mean, uh, this Hegseth guy was talking about, you know, children don't get it. I mean, that's belied by the fact that, I mean, last week there were 10 really young kids in, uh, uh, in ICUs in Mississippi, and four of them were on ventilators. So it's, um, it's clear that it's a danger. It's clear that everybody ought to be wearing a mask in school that Joe Biden was right today that said all 4 million federal workers had to be vaccinated or at least prove every week that they're not infected by COVID. Now, this is all, he's assuming that people are going to tell the truth because you don't have to prove that you were vaccinated. You just have to claim you were vaccinated. So yeah. I take it a little tougher. And what's about the military? The guy's the commander in chief. And I, I know there are a lot of rumors that he, in fact, is going to say to all on duty uh, service members, you have to be vaccinated. Forty percent the other day, at least 40 percent of the Marines were not vaccinated. And their argument, to the extent that they have one, is it might make me sterile. You know, 
Well, I mean, an argument could be made that if we wanted to weed out the, the, an argument could be made that if you got rid of all the soldiers who refused to get vaccinated, you would be weeding out a lot of the men and women who sympathized with the January Sixers. Is that a fair statement? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, there's no, I mean, there's now, now there's starting to be serious scholarly studies of the, uh, the, the numbers, the percentages, the kinds of people who are both Trump is actually the president and we believe vaccines are dangerous. The, the merger of those two ideas is very, very high. And I think we'll, we'll see more studies over the next few months. But it wouldn't surprise me if it was 90 or 95 percent. I was with a bunch of medical professionals, some pretty major people on Sunday night at dinner. And we were talking about why people don't get vaccines. And um, my wife, who, who's not here, but she concurred with somebody else at the dinner table who said so many people are afraid of needles. And somebody else was uh, Vito. What's it called? Uh, Vita Vedo. My daughter has it. It's a some kind of. They faint at the sight of needles. Right, and there are some people, but there are some people who faint, and there are people who are really, really scared. But I don't buy that as the principal objection here, and neither do I accept the idea that people think that there are microchips in the vaccine. I mean, it's such a nutty idea, but I do think that people do want to stick it to the liberals. They want Biden to fail. And the one way they can do that is to be able to accuse him of having promised we wouldn't have to wear masks. Now look, all of a sudden we have to wear masks again. And that that's enough. And, and these doctors, a number of them said, you know, I hadn't really thought of that, but we were taking two of them home. One of them said, you know, I kind of think you're right. It's so politicized. And once you get rid of the, it'll magnetize you so you know, paper clips will stick to your arm uh, and I'm afraid of needles. And I, I do think this is so much of this is political. And that's why I find people, look, 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 look is what Kevin McCarthy said this afternoon. He's out giving a speech. Make no mistake, the threat of having masks back is not a decision based on science, but a decision conjured up by liberal government officers who want to continue to live in a perpetual pandemic state. Does he really believe that? I don't believe he believes that. Well, he wants to reopen the economy. He is of the thinking that if a cup, if, you know, the elitists, the coastal elitists can live with a an economy that's shut down. Sure. But if we open the economy and some people have to die, uh, so be it. That, uh, you know, uh, the, the lieutenant governor of Texas, uh, what's his name? Uh, I played his, he's a, uh, who's the lieutenant um, governor? Lieutenant governor of Texas is uh, the most powerful man. Abbott. No, Isn't that's the governor. The governor. I'm it's not so checking. easy to get uh, politicians in Texas mixed up. Right. I'm not checking Google, and I'm not checking with Professor Ann Lee. I see she's here. It's cheating. Uh, he has the same. Dan Patrick. Dan Patrick, yes. Yeah. yeah. I was Did you cheating. cheat? You cheated. Who? Yeah, Google yeah. or Professor Ann Lee? The, uh, the chat. That, that's Professor Ann Lee. That's cheating. No, I don't think it is. No, it's someone else. Okay. Can't reveal who it is. So he said, you know, I'm 68, 69, and uh, I'm willing to die for my grandchildren. You know, we reopen, and if I die from COVID, but it prevents my kids from living a life of poverty, I'm willing to die for that. That was the most honest answer. Because I think that's what they believe. I think the Republicans are in the service of commerce and a permanent state of pandemic means there's no commerce. So some people have to die to keep the economy going. At least that's honest. 
it, it's <laughs> honest. It, I'm not sure, honestly, that I believe that he believes that. I, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I think that this is like, but, but there was a, one, a sad, really sad article, I think, in the Washington Post about a week ago about three women who were vaccine deniers. I think they were all in Missouri and they all got COVID and two of them were pretty much on death's door. And they were asked, do you wish you had, had taken the vaccines? And uh, that all three of them said, well, no. And they said, well, but, but you're very sick from COVID. But we, we don't want to do that. And then just uh, an hour or so ago on an NBC Nightly News, they're interviewing North Carolina health care workers, four of them, none of them vaccinated. The guy was trying to, you know, the interview was trying to get some idea of why they did that. They, well, you don't know what the side effects might be in 10 years, which, which is true. I mean, because we don't have time machines yet, but. But the others said, well, it might be more dangerous. And what about, and I don't want to walk over your clips, but I mean, the other night on Laura Ingram's show, she had this woman from uh, some nonprofit called Breathe Easy or something. And she made the claim that her children, her child, was at greater risk over the last year because of wearing a mask then the child would be right in school maskless. What is that? What does that even mean? It doesn't mean. I mean, it's it's junk science. I mean, you know, when John was talking about junk religion, um, and there's so much of that, but there's also junk science that people believe, and they accept it. They say it. They say it again. They convince themselves that they're speaking the truth. But it's like denying the evidence for evolution. Yeah. You know, that you can and believe. It's very, it. It, it, what's so dangerous about it, and, and we learned it from Trump, he will float an idea as a joke first. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe uh, I'll suspend the election. <laughs> just <laughs> you put it out there just to see. Yep, and, yep. and or I'm just asking questions. And I saw a comedian on Joe Rogan talking about his how sick he got from the vaccine. And I'm thinking, you irresponsible prick. You're not a doctor. You smoke way too much dope. I know who you are. You drink. You're stupid. And you are you have an audience now of a couple of million on Joe Rogan. Just, you know, and enough idiots trust this guy. And he's saying, you know, I had a bad reaction to the vaccine. I don't give a shit what you're, keep it to yourself. Yep, yep. Nobody cares. You know, you, you, you probably I know who this guy is and he mixes it with pills and and alcohol. And he had a bad reaction to the vaccine. I think he had a bad reaction to mixing Vicodin with pot and, and whiskey. But he's out there and, and he's just floating it like I had a bad reaction. Shut the F up about your reaction. You got a million people watching you. It's a sideways attempt at being an anti-vaxxer. You know, I want, we need more studies. We, we have enough studies. It works. Shut up, you're a comedian. Yeah, yeah. So you say, you're not, anyway, let me play you Dan Patrick. Please, please. Just because I can find it. That's the only purpose. I, I just <laughs> want to prove to you that I have a filing system. This is uh, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick. But I'm not living in fear of COVID-19. What I'm living in fear of is what's happening to this country. And you know, Tucker, no one reached out to me and said, uh, as a senior citizen, uh, are you willing to take a chance on your survival in exchange for keeping the America that all America loves for your children and grandchildren? And if that's the exchange, I'm all in. Um, and that doesn't make me noble or brave or anything like that. I just think there are lots of grandparents out there in this country, like me, I have six grandchildren, that what we all care about and what we love more than anything are those children. Yeah, well, he... <laughs> At least he's, I think he believes that. I, I, I have real trouble believing that because 
does he not look, you know, the other data you have to look at is what's the state of the economy? And Republicans believe the measure of the strength of the economy is where the stock market is. And the stock market is at historic highs. It has gone up. It has made millionaires into multimillionaires. And if that's the measure, then Biden must be doing something right, because look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And the other thing, the, the other reason I don't believe this is that, what did he say? He said, I'm not, nobody came and asked me. Oh, thank God, because if they had come to ask him, then he'd have shot them. Because, of course, the other big thing that's happening now is all the gun nuts are saying, you know, we... Uh, we hate the idea that people are coming to ask us if we've been vaccinated. If they come here, said one on the Internet last night, um, they better be prepared for me and my shotgun. You, uh, yes, I'm going to give you a shot. <laughs> I'm going to give you a shot. Not in my arm. I'm going to shoot you in the belly and let you die in pain. Right. So who is this benefiting? Well, I... You see, I, th- I think that it benefits, the, the politicians believe that it benefits them. Why does Ron DeSantis, whose state is now in the top three, maybe by today in the top two uh, places where COVID is growing the fastest. But he's still, in fact, he was uh, on Thursday, he was in, uh, Utah, speaking to ALEC, which is the American Legislative uh, Education Council or something. It's they write right. all the, the bills yeah. that are killing us. Yeah. And they're, you know, they're they create model legislation, all this right wing stuff and then sell it in the states. But I think that people like DeSantis believe that he will. The combination of making these statements, talking about how uh, important it was for Flor- Floridians to be free. You know, he even is selling goods, uh, coffee cups and T-shirts that say, don't Fauci Florida. And he believes that Dr. Fauci, who may have said one or two things in the very beginning that turned out not to be true. But I think the average Floridian says, if I had to believe medical advice from Anthony Fauci versus medical advice from Ron DeSantis, I'm going with Fauci. That's the biggest hope I have, that there are people who used to be Republicans. Maybe they still think they are, but they look at this nuttiness that's going on and they say, I can't associate with this party anymore. And all you have to do, I think, is take create, in fact, somebody already did this, just take examples from one day, Thursday of this week, and look at the crazy nut stuff that's being done by Republicans. We have a, a DC, of course, has a jails and prisons and incarcerated and in many of them are the uh, rioters from January 6th. So Matt Gates and Marjorie Taylor Greene and Louis Gohmert went down to the facility. And this Paul afternoon. Gosar. Well, I, I didn't see Paul, but Paul uh, Gosar. it wouldn't the de- Dr. Me. Paul Gosar, dentist. Dr. Paul Gosar. And they demanded to go in and have a conversation with the inmates, just, just the ones from uh, January 6th. And, of course, they weren't allowed in. I have a clip. Do you have it? Show us that clip. Is this? The media, you saw what happened here. The left shut us down. Yes, that was yesterday. They tried to hold a press conference saying these 50 people who these brave people who stormed the camp, these are Congress people saying, you know, these are political prisoners being held by the federal government. We want to make sure they're being treated properly. And you actually had a media show up that blew whistles and 
said, are you a pedophile? They yeah. asked the one question that was germane. Are you a pedophile? And it looked like a, it looked like a bad movie. A really bad movie. It looked like a really like Gomert, Gosar, Marjorie Taylor Greene and Gates. The only one missing was a Bobert. Correct. Correct. She was probably practicing her riflery. Yeah. So if she could get into the Olympics next time in case she's not reelected. No, it, th that was horrible yesterday. But with the thing I was talking about before just happened 24 hours later when they went to the jail here to see the insurrectionist criminals and they were denied entry. So uh, uh, Gomer pulls out his congressional membership card shoves it up against the wall of the door and, and I'm a member of Congress like a member of con you don't members of Congress have all kinds of perks but it doesn't mean you get to go in to any building at all and demand to see some of the people who are in there how many times do you think any of those clowns would possibly have gone to try to see the conditions in the DC jails and prisons if to, to, to determine well, we did the go down to the, the ICE detention facilities. I do remember yeah. our side where they were flashing their congressional cards and they weren't being allowed in to see the kids in the cages. Right. And uh, then again, when they did let the Republicans in, yeah. do you remember uh, Lindsey Graham? He almost fainted, all those men in cages. Oh, my. No. It is getting yeah. hot in here. Uh, Just a few pieces of black leather and uh, yes. done more than faint. Uh, no, but, but this idea, uh, the privilege that comes from being a, a white, uh, with the exception of, of Marjorie Taylor Greene, white male, and insisting that you get a right to do anything and go anywhere. And, of course, the, the people who ran the facility said you can't come in and that makes perfectly good sense um but but and then just you know the thing with um mccarthy that i just quoted i mean put those two things together there's another thing that happened today senator uh, john kennedy i always think it's it's just horrible to even use the phrase senator john kennedy about this jerk from louisiana uh, he's he's having a he's on the, the judiciary committee and he's talking to, he's interrogating a guy who's some kind of mid-level, um, would be appointee. And he says to the guy, uh, do you believe in God? Do you believe in God? Now, the Constitution, and forget the establishment principle and all that, but there's a very specific uh, sentence in Article 3 that says, there shall be no religious test for public office. Why would you ask that question if <laughs> you know there's no religious test for public office? And I remember we used to work with senators on the Judiciary Committee or a couple of times when I was on Fox News with uh, the, the uh, un unlovable, um, oh, quickly we forget their names. Who is it? Joe Cannon? Now, um, you it was the biggest guy on Fox. Dan and he, Patrick, Lieutenant Governor the Dan Lufa, Patrick. The Lufa guy. Oh, Bill O'Reilly. Bill O'Reilly. And I, he, he would say, well, what's, what was wrong with the hearing today? And I said, what was wrong with the hearing was nothing. And he said, but the, the Democrats actually asked the question, can you separate your religious views from your uh, job uh, upholding the Constitution? I said, yeah, that's a very good question. What about... You can't have a religious test for public office. I said, that's not what they asked. They said, can you separate? We'll assume you have very strong religious views. Can you separate them? But these guys, and, and woe to the senator who asked that question, because they were then pilloried for five minutes because of asking a simple question. Can you do this? Now, the fact that even Clarence Thomas actually once said, uh, he was in favor of the separation of church and state, which, of course, was a, a complete lie. But they say it. They, they lie about it. But that's all you can get sometimes. People would say, I can do that. I can separate. And um, 
I think it was Religion News Service the other day, looked at the, there were 15 efforts by religious groups to get out of certain requirements under COVID. In every one of those cases, uh, but one, I think, you know, the church got its exceptions. The church got its pass, pass by. I, it's, it's, they're it's getting us killed. They're, they're getting us killed. And they are getting us killed. And they're angry at us. And I've heard a doctor who I know said, well, I can't repeat what he said, but it was pretty much weed out the herd. But that he said, I apologize. So you know, he remembers treating people in the ICU okay. and these people who refuse to get vaccinated. He said to me, at some point, weed out the herd, but that's not the way it works. They end up killing sure. innocents. Yeah, I mean, and I, I know, guess you know. they're innocent themselves. I, I, you know, in the end, it's the fault of Fox News. It and truly is. Republican leadership who are killing off Americans with misinformation. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you know, people that have these, you know, I won't do it, I won't do it, I won't get it. They, they didn't get this information out of thin air. This did not come to them in a dream. This came to them because they listened to Sean Hannity, Tucker Carlson, Laura Ingram, all on the same night, sometimes with the same guests, repeating the same lies. You know, remember that Bob Dylan song, Masters of War? It's one of the, it's one of the bluntest songs he ever wrote. And, you know, it ends with him being delighted that these people who make uh, weapons of war die. But there's a line in it um, that says, uh, you've never done nothing but build to destroy. You play with my world like it's your little toy. And while I was watching Laura and Tucker the other night, I thought this is what somebody should write a song. It's, that you, you've never done anything worthwhile in your life but misinform people and lead to their death. Yeah. Something like that. I'm sure there could be more eloquent. Well, let's look at people. Tucker Carlson and Britt Hume talking yeah. about the insurrection. <laughs> uh, these are two men who've never served no. a day in their life. They never served this country. They've been on the sidelines sniping. This is uh, Tucker Carlson poo-pooing the four officers, the drama queens, they call them actors, uh, who, uh, who testified Tuesday. This is Tucker Carlson. I thought when that January 6th thing happened, it was bad. I hate it when people break stuff. You shouldn't riot at a, at a federal building, period. But the disparity in the way that those rioters were treated as compared to the way the rioters last summer were treated is just too much. And it's making me feel like equal application of the law is dead. If this were covered, Tucker, the way the riots of last summer were covered, it would be described as mostly peaceful. And I think to a great extent it was peaceful. The picture that you've shown of the people who were in the Capitol building milling around, the guy walking around the Senate chamber with the horns on and so on, most of them were peaceful, but some obviously were not. Right. And that explains the, the nightmare experience that the undermanned and overwhelmed Capitol Police officers who testified today had to go through. Some of them obviously had a terrible experience and considered it a near thing. Um, but there is certainly a disparity between the way that this event was covered and the way it's been responded to politically uh, and the way that the, the more serious rioting of last summer with more deaths to show for it have been treated. 70 people were shot in Chicago this weekend, which is to say two days ago, 70 people. I wonder if Adam Kinzinger will cry about that, or maybe not because it's not about him. I mean, I, I wonder if there's ever been a greater display of, of narcissism on Capitol Hill, and that's saying a lot, but like ever in history. That's just incredible. It is. It, it really is incredible. Uh, so disingenuous. C can you hear me? Yes, I can. So disingenuous, and 
what what people like Tucker Carlson and Britt Hume are so good at is they don't care, so they trivialize these events. And their logic is, hey, it's like something else. Everything is like something else. So nothing means anything. Something horrible happened, but that's like something else. So why are you focusing on that when you can focus on something? Your kid is dying from cancer, okay? But lots of kids are dying from cancer. Why should you care that your kid is dying from cancer? Because it's my kid. It's yeah. my capital. It's my country. Exactly. But, 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 but plenty of kids are dying from it. It's my country. It's my kid. That's what they do. It is so, it, it's so fallacious. They, they, yeah. They're arguing. Uh, and I still don't understand why. Well, I do understand why they do it. I do understand. Why do you think they do it? Uh, well, Dave Cyrus, brilliant comedy yeah. writer, said that they are keeping a beast happy. I always thought they're solely in the service of some nefarious group of oligarchs who want us fighting amongst ourselves and they want to reopen the economy and blah, 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 blah. Dave Cyrus says Fox News created an audience. It's a beast that must be fed and be told what it wants to hear, that the audience is the message. You want to keep that audience happy and sated. And Tucker is telling that audience what it wants to hear, as opposed to parroting talking points given to him to brainwash the beast. Yeah, I think that's a that's a good answer. Um, the because when people say, well, they need, they're trying to make more money. I mean, I can, t- Tucker Carlson, is, he was never poor. Uh, he ain't poor the Swanson now. For, isn't he an heir to the Swanson yeah, from yeah. So, I mean, these TV people. Dinner. Are, it's TV Swanson dinner. Swanson TV dinner. Yeah. yeah. They don't even have, I think they have vegetarian dinners now. I'm not sure. Right. But, um, but look what they said about uh, Harry Dunn. He's the African-American large African-American man who was one of the four people who testified. And he said, and I, I, mean, I have to say to their credit, most of the networks actually said, I'm not going to say it, but the effing, someone called him an effing N. He said, I never have been called that in my life. So what did they say? Laura Ingram, Tucker Carlson that night, they, they didn't, I don't think the words crisis actor came out well, of their lips, but, but it but, did out but, of others. Uh, they, they tweeted out, people who work for Fox News tweeted out that he was a crisis, crisis actor. Crisis actor, yeah. Right. And of course, that these are people who allegedly, uh, in order to make the right look bad, uh, do, uh, they, they say things but they they didn't really experience those things. They're just making it. I heard a guy today say, uh, well, I, I was listening to Officer Dunn and he said somebody called him an effing N. But I don't I don't I didn't see that. Uh, wh- where is that on the tapes? You know, yeah, well, of I, course we I haven't have, even seen all the tapes. I have had apologists on the show who have said the people who stormed the Capitol were not racists, were not from that basket of deplorables. They are angry and we need to listen to why they're angry. We have found out that they are in fact mostly white, mostly from Hillary's proverbial basket of deplorables. These are these are racists. These are people who could easily storm a mosque, a synagogue, a, a an LGBTQ rally. These people could be convinced to they are animated by hatred. And that's who they are. They're the same people who listen to Fox News. The people who stormed the Capitol are not leftists. They're not Antifa. They're not progressives. They are primarily white men, primarily white men in cells 
who are egged on by women, like Ashley Babbitt, you know, there were some women there, but these are the worst of the worst. And to, to call them anything but that is to apologize for really bad. I'm well, sorry. Michael Fantone, you know, who's uh, yeah. gotten a great deal of attention and who had the, okay, he had the audacity to pound on the table. And they said, that, well, that's what, you know, crisis actors do. They're just acting. But the, he was accused by many outlets of being a member of Antifa. Why? Because he's been known to wear all black clothing. Because that's, that's that, very that, slimming. That's, that's, that's a tip, tip off right away. Well, I played this earlier, but I'm going to play it again sure, because sure. we heard the testimony of you know the people who were carrying a Confederate flag into the Capitol. These were people, mostly white men, shouting the N word at black officers, and this this is from uh, CNN Don Lemon interviewed Michael Fanon. How is it? How, how is it pronounced? Fantone, I think. Fantone, yeah. Uh, if you have any, this was a voicemail left. This man yeah. suffered a concussion. He had a heart attack. They, they tased him. They bear sprayed him. They dragged him and almost killed him. He's got PTSD. He testified on Tuesday. This is a voicemail that was left uh, on his phone. And uh, this is him, uh, Don Lemon, playing the voicemail. If there are any kids, it's a little rough. So if, if there are any kids under the age of 13, make sure they get to hear this so they can identify the true nature of the Republican Party. This is very important that young people hear who the Republican Party really is. Mike received a voicemail a day um, while he was testifying, and he shared that voicemail with us. And I have to warn everybody, I, listen, think about what these officers went through. Think, think about what Officer Fanon went through. You had, your injuries were, you had a brain injury? Uh, a traumatic brain injury. Heart attack. Heart attack, concussion, and uh, also diagnosed with uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. Okay. It includes some incredibly offensive language, but we think people need to hear the kind of attacks that these officers are facing right now just for telling the truth about January 6th. Play it. This is from Michael Fanone, Metropolitan Police Officer. You're on trial right now, lying and that. Uh, you want an Emmy, an Oscar? What are you trying to go for here? You're so full of shit, you little faggot fucker. You're a little pussy, man. I can slap you up the side of your head with a backhand and knock you out, you little faggot. You're a punk faggot. You're a lying fuck. How about all that scummy black fucking scum for two years, destroying our cities and burning them and stealing all that shit out of the stores and everything? How about that and assaulting cops and killing people? How about that, you fucker? That was shit on the goddamn Capitol. I wish they would have killed all you scumbags because you, you people are scum. They stole the election from Trump and you know that, you scumbag. And you fucking, too bad they didn't beat the shit out of you more. You're a piece of shit. You're a little fag, you fucking scumbag. It was, it was important for you. You did not want us to censor that. What do you say to that? What do you want people to know? And that idiot. Uh, I mean, I remember like my first reaction uh, immediately after listening to that uh, phone call, which I actually received while I was testifying uh, in the hearing today. Um, this is what happens to people that tell the truth in Trump's America. That is Trump's America. Yes, it is. That, that is Trump's America. And uh, you should play that for your kids because that yep. was the voice of the Republican Party. Indeed it is. You know, with all due respect to Kinziger and, and Liz Cheney, and uh, I, I maintain that it's very difficult. When you look at their voting record, these, these are not kind of progressive people. These are really very conservative when it comes to most of the other issues, uh, economic issues, civil liberties issues. But, you know, they... I must say that I, I do think they did make a real contribution the other day to the hearing because sure. it did demonstrate. And this goes back to my sense that there really are people 
who may have identified or maybe still identify as Republicans, but who look at all this craziness and go, I can't associate myself with this party, at least for a while, maybe giving a chance in the midterm elections for, uh, for it not to, to go what most observers think, lose the House and probably lose the Senate. I think there are enough people with a kind of common sense that conservatism does not mean in every case racism. It does not mean that you're going to call police officers scumbags. That and these are things be that these are things beyond the pale for normal human conversation. Yeah, I think they're there. I, I want to stay on this if you don't mind, sure, and, and sure. thank you for this. Uh, I'm a broken record on this. You may not, not you, Reverend, but uh, you may not think that what happened on January 6th was part of something bigger. You, you might think, you may lull yourself to sleep thinking, eh, it was a protest that turned into a riot. Okay. The people who stormed the Capitol, I'm a broken record on this, ask a member of the LGBTQ community, ask a woman, Ask a black person, ask an Arab, ask a, Hisp a Hispanic or a Jew who those people were. Now, there may have been some, you know, one or two black people. I know there was an Orthodox Jew in there. I'm sure a lot of them were repressed members of the LGBTQ. Well, they weren't members of the community. There, there were women. But overall, if you ask a vast preponderance of members of a protected class, who those people were on January 6th. They know exactly who those people are. These are the same people who crucified Matthew Shepard. These are the same people who could be convinced to crucify Matthew Shepard, who could be convinced to storm a mosque after 9-11, who could be convinced to storm a synagogue, who could be convinced to storm a black church, who could be convinced to storm a newspaper or a radio station. This is, I'm a broken record on this. I don't care. This is an extrajudicial army, the same kind Duterte in the Philippines relies on. This is Donald Trump's army. This is the Republicans' brown shirts, the three percenters, the Oath Keepers, the Proud Boys. They marched, look at the tapes, watch the New York Times, watch Frontline, look at the tapes. Yes, Ashley Babbitt was probably just swept along by a, a nefarious group of well-organized and armed right-wing authoritarians who knew how to light a match and for you to deny that that that's what this was you are you are lying to yourself and to your country there's been nothing like this in the history of our country do i care about pelosi or pence i care about my country and i care about the capital because it's our last hope and to trivialize it makes you part of the problem greg gutfeld is a comedian Oh, really? fail. Yes, he's a comedian. That's oh. he's not. A, he didn't go to J school. He's not a journalist. And uh, Jesse Waters, comedian, failed comedian. They make jokes. All comedians make jokes by reminding us that something is like something else. That's that is the basic structure of humor. We get laughs by reminding people that something is like something else. But because it's in no way related it gets a laugh that's the core of humor that's what a joke is it's taking two separate incongruous ideas juxtaposing them trying to link them together they don't really fit that's what makes people laugh how stupid the juxtaposition is and comedians are great at that and it's why fox news turns to comedians it's why dennis miller was a darling of the right wing because comedians can make ridiculous, you know, uh, yep. uh, 
uh, Ann Coulter does it. And it's why Greg Gutfeld and Jesse Waters, they're given a show on Fox because they can hide under the cover of, hey, I'm being funny when it doesn't work. I'm just being funny. They're good at saying something is just like something else, even though it isn't. It isn't. Take a look at a failed comedian uh, who is pass, uh, who passes himself off as a pundit, Greg uh, Gutfeld. He's on Fox News. And the, this is why it's so dangerous. People who watch Fox, it's Fox News. So the idiots who watch Fox News think because Greg Gutfeld, is that his name? Yeah. Greg Gutfeld, they think he's on Fox News. He <laughs> must have gone to J school. He must be, he can't just be some angry idiot who, who who's a failed comedian look at him on the five it, it, it's breathtaking uh what he does here if i can find it let me um do i have it ah that was such a great lead up to it greg gutfeld where are you uh here it is this is greg gutfeld failed comedian Having said that, it would be fun to do a hearing on the crime wave and interview the police from Seattle, Portland, uh, Minneapolis, New York City, just to provide real context about actual threats to democracy. We're being lectured by phony politicians uh, about threats to our country while they ignored a mounting pile of dead. And it's all for politics. I also reject the idea that having politicians jobs disrupted for two hours is somehow worse than billions of dollars in destruction and dozens of deaths including police officers that's why i would like to see a hearing about that because i'm not i'm not gonna i can't stomach the crying i can't stomach the crying i saw some really bad stuff all last year and none of those people lifted a damn finger. What a backwards world we live in where the media didn't give two Fs about police officers getting killed, about businesses torched, but they lionize a response in which an unarmed female protester was shot dead, point blank. Imagine if she was BLM. Imagine that. How would this turn out differently if it was a BLM protest? Just think about that. That's why this is a circus. That's a clown show. And I don't buy the fault, the fake tears. Fugazi tears, Dana. And when they keep comparing this to 9-11, I'd like them to call uh, just a few of the thousands of children who lost a mother or a father on 9-11. This is hideous. Something is like something else. Can sure, you hear sure. me? Yeah, yeah. Something is like something else. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. January 6th, Hey, it's just like BLM from last summer because uh, it's kind of uh, something. And I know. No, but, you know, this comparison to 9 11, that who, whoever that woman was at the very end. Um, but it, horrible as that was, the amount of coverage that it got, when you looked at what happened in American cities the weekend after 9 11, dozens and dozens of people killed with guns on the street uh, got covered, not at all. I mean, we don't do very well covering a lot of things, but to compare, to say, well, we should bring some parents in who lost people in 9-11. You're right, it has no connection whatsoever to this. This is one singular event. This is one horrible event. This is a horrible event where someone like the woman that was shot is herself try. I mean, there were literally members of Congress, as I understand it, that she was looking at. They they were visible in if you actually saw the whole frame of those pictures. And here she is. She's angry. She's threatening. She's shot by a police officer who is himself fearful of his own life. This is not like shooting an African-American man on the street because he talks back to you, because he doesn't turn off his blinkers on his car. There's no comparison. This woman, whether you had to shoot her in order to protect members of Congress, I don't know. Who knows? But I'd like, I mean, they, I'm sure this will come up in the uh, 
special hearing, they're not going to ignore the fact that the right wing explanation is that this woman, Ashley, was murdered by the police. It's not going to be ignored and it shouldn't be ignored. But I think there's no evidence to suggest right now that the police and I don't think they've yet revealed the name of the police, although maybe somebody on Fox did. Um, you just can't, you cannot seriously believe that there was no justification for shooting a person under those raw circumstances. Looting? What are, what, are, what are the laws when it comes to looting? I remember in Katrina, not that I'm justifying, but looter, what, didn't the sheriff during Katrina said looters will be shot on site? I mean, right. well, you can't. You, you can't. That's not good policing to shoot but, on site people who are running away with. Uh, Fox they, News they, was they, justifying they, it I, well, I know. when, when African-Americans are doing of it. Of course.